Have you ever been away from home and desperately needed a file that's only on your main computer? Or maybe you're trying to work remotely but the office PC went to sleep and your remote software just can't connect anymore. Standard remote desktop software is great but it has huge weaknesses. It only works if the computer is already on and running perfectly. The second it crashes, freezes or gets stuck before Windows loads, you're completely locked out. Well. What if you could have a direct hardware level connection to your computer from anywhere in the world, right from a web browser? This is the GLINet Comet PoE, and it's a game changer. It's not an app, it's a small physical box that you plug into your computer. It gives you full control of your keyboard, mouse and video as if you were sitting right in front of it. Can't use VPNs because of network restrictions? The Comet gives you secure access without needing one. Need to get into the BIOS to change a setting? You can do it from your laptop on the other side of the globe. And for you home labbers, what about the dreaded system crash when you're away from home? This device can literally press the power button for you to restart a frozen system. So is the Comet PoE and its cool companion, the Fingerbot, the ultimate tool for true remote freedom? In this video, we're going to set it up and put it to the test. Let's see if it lives up to the promise. So the first thing that we're going to do is unbox the Comet PoE. We're going to take the cellophane wrapper off and have a little look inside. As I've come to expect with GLINet hardware, the presentation is always immaculate and on point, and that doesn't disappoint with the box. Inside, we'll notice that we have some guides, the Comet PoE itself, and underneath some additional items, such as the Ethernet cable and HDMI cable, including a USB-C to USB-C connector. This also includes a USB-A to USB-C connector. And then we get to the cherry on the cake, and this is a premium feeling aluminium casing for the Comet PoE, substantially larger than the original Comet PoE itself. It has all the ports on the one side with only one additional port on the rear, including all our serial numbers and MAC addresses underneath. You'll see that you have the option of a USB 5 volt 2 amp connected if you want the traditional power supply option as well. On the front we have our USB external simulation device, HDMI, keyboard, mouse, USB inputs and outputs and of course our PoE connector as well which is 1 gigabits per second. Now let's compare the original Comet with the Comet PoE, the Comet PoE being on the left. If we look at both of them from side to side, you'll see that the Comet PoE is almost a shade darker than the original Comet. Somewhat less attractive in my personal opinion, but there we go. You'll notice the different amount of ports on each side, and my favourite is that the Comet PoE kind of focuses all its ports on the one main side. You get the same standard information underneath with your serial numbers and such, but ultimately they're both made of aluminium and size-wise you can see the substantial difference. The Comet PoE is very large, very rectangular, very brick-like in comparison to the smaller original Comet. Now, if we add in the All Sun Ray Q1 KVM, which I'm looking at at the moment as well, you'll see that's even smaller again. And you'll need to check the upcoming video regarding that on the channel. You'll notice that the three of them together stand out uniquely, almost like a box of hats stacked one on top of each other. But ultimately, it will all come down to the functionality of these devices and the user base that they attract. Now, with our Comet PoE all set up and plugged in, it's as simple as going to your web browser and going to the IP address that this device has been assigned by your router. From there, you'll be able to create yourself a password to log into your Comet going forwards. 
One of the first things we're going to do is just double check that we are running the latest version by clicking on the version firmware information and we are so that's great otherwise we would have updated at this point now there are a lot of ways you can connect to this you can use good cloud which is their own cloud service which you can enable directly in the user interface across the browser you can even download the desktop apps and mobile apps to your respective devices as well or you can do what I'm doing, which is using WireGuard VPN to get back home and use the IP addresses natively in my browser. I prefer that much more because I do find some apps can be a little bit invading privacy wise and you can't always trust everybody, no matter how good they are. That said, GLINet is a very respectable company. Looking on the left hand side, we'll see a lot of our settings, including quality such as ultra high, which of course I'm going to use. We then have the mode and orientation options, which we can use to flip the screen around depending on your setup. We also have underneath that the ESID, which is basically just an option to change the resolution. This display on this machine is natively 1080p, so I would feel a little bit more custom to setting that at 1080p. After a few seconds of changing that particular setting, the screen will kind of turn off and turn on again, and you'll notice that the icons are a little bigger, which is a lot more easier to read. You can then enable the speaker option so that you can get audio from your computer and the microphone, which allows you to do two-way microphone communication to your system. When you enable this option or disable the option entirely, you will have to reboot the KVM itself. So it might be worth just doing the mute option. When you unmute or enable the microphone through the KVM, you'll notice that the host web browser that you're using is going to give you a warning, basically telling you, watch out, this tab is using this microphone. Now, of course, that's exactly what we want to happen because we're passing through the microphone to the KVM and then onto our system that we want to put that through to. This is a great option. And although I had a microphone access denied error, um, when I tested this out in Windows, as you're about to see, this worked absolutely fine. Just make sure that you're enabling the microphone in the bottom right hand side of the KVM, not just the mute or unmute button on the left hand side panel. You'll then see as I speak the indicator on the Windows system sound microphone level bounce up and down to show that I am passing through this audio through the web browser onto the KVM and straight through to our Windows operating system, which will be great for things like Teams calls or things like that, no matter where you are in the world. Now going through some of the original settings, just like the original Comet, we have the virtual keyboard. We also have the option to enable or disable the mouse. We have mouse jiggle, which is great, especially if you're on Teams where you want it to remain green and active to say that you're working, that you're at the desk, that you're available. Uh, you can turn on mouse jiggle and it'll keep the screen going around and also stop the screensaver going off as well there as well. Now, one of the hotly requested um, features in this software was the system identifier via the device identity uh, and essentially what this does is say that you were using this on a works computer but they don't want you to have certain devices on there well you could make this look like any other device you could make this look like a keyboard you could make this look like a webcam you could make this look like any other device other than what it is which obviously is a kvm which is remote connecting into it maybe you're not allowed to maybe you want to hide that type of activity for privacy reasons there's a host of different ways of doing it but one of the really in-depth features here is that you can really get into the nitty gritty and create different vendor ids different product ids what manufacturers you want the product name itself and serial numbers to really give this an authentic look so if there are any specialist it teams or anyone invading your privacy uh, were looking into this they would see that information and not that it was a kvm so ultimately, you get the gist of what this device is capable of. You can hook this up to any computer or laptop. You can connect to it remotely over the internet in various different ways. If you're a beginner, I recommend using the good cloud service as mentioned earlier at the top of this particular page. Now, the biggest difference in the specs are as follows. 32 gigabytes of VMMC storage versus the 8. A quad core ARM Cortex A53 versus the A7. We've got increased write speed, so we're rocking 25 megabytes per second versus uh, 9. And then reads, we've got 35 megabits per second, megabytes per second versus 10. We've also got 30 to 60 milliseconds latency as usual, 1 gigabit RJ45. Ethernet, 4K, 30 FPS, and obviously the biggest difference is the PoE power and additional Type-C on the PoE versus the Comet's original just Type-C power.
Another really useful tool is the GLINet Fingerbot, which allows you to turn on physical buttons such as your laptop or PC computer, which is great for remote activation of power systems. You will find this USB dongle inside the Fingerbot itself, so just remove it and plug it in and then you're good to go. You just plug it into the comments USB port and it will then show up on the accessories tab. When in the interface for your Comet PoE, all you've got to do is go to the accessories tab after plugging the USB stick in to the port and you will find your Fingerbot is magically there waiting for you. At that point, all you have to do is click the press button. It'll ask for a confirmation unless you've unchecked the box and then will activate the Fingerbot, which will in turn power on or power off the device that you're using through the machine's power button. So I hope the video has helped you understand exactly what the Comet PoE has to offer, not just the fact that it simply connects via power over Ethernet, and that it gives you a bit more insights into the Fingerbot accessory that you can purchase separately as well. Now, all links will be in the description of the video, so please feel free to use those and check out some of my other videos, especially the original Comet as well. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.